Hey YouTube, uh, welcome back to the channel. Just wanted to go over uh, some of the stuff that we've gotten done here lately. I know I haven't posted in a while, but we have gotten a lot of things done. I will be going over that and Marcus uh, has been able to come home and do some work and he's gotten quite a lot accomplished. So, so Marcus went ahead and bought us a tiller. Uh, we have been using the neighbor's tiller, uh, but we went ahead since we were going to need it more often to till each row um, following the initial uh, first till. Uh, we went ahead and got us a tiller. And this is a gas powered front tine tiller. Uh, it has four tines on the front of it. Uh, there are pins that you can pull and pull two of the t uh, tines off. So that way it can be a two tine tiller uh, and go into a more narrow spot. And here you can see he's tilling in between my tomato rows. Uh, I've got 12 tomato plants planted. Um, I do plan on planting more. And I have also went back and pruned my tomato plants and I will show that in a future video. And we went ahead and just tilled up the rest of the garden from where I had planted beets and other greens that just wasn't doing well. The bugs had eaten up and some of it just wasn't coming up. Um, so we figured we'd just go ahead and till it up and then plan a future crop uh, for the fall. What are you doing? Ah! <laughs> you fall over. Stand up. Stand up. And of course, Mikhail was enjoying his ride on Mama's back as we walked around the property. And here's the final product of the tilling. I've got my yellow squash here on the end of my corn rows. My corn have really come up. And we did have another rain today. And here we've got our pole beans. And now we are uh, putting up cattle panels. So we've, got, we've still got to go get those. Um, but this is our pole beans and they are starting to send up tendrils on a few of them, not all of them. Like there's one there. There's one here that's really got a tendril sent up and it looks like there's some kind of beetle on it. What kind of beetle is that? Is that a ladybug? That's not a ladybug. That's something else. Looks like we're going to have to research that one. And see with the rain, we can't really keep putting bug stuff on here because the rain keeps washing it off. Um, but once the rain stops, I'm going to come out here and hit this with some um, Monterey BT. And something else, I guess, to keep the beetles off. Looks like we've got a something there don't know what that is on our pole beans so yeah we've got some kind of beetle it looks like so we've got to get some pest control going over here there's our zucchini we've got a zucchini plant this one's kind of falling over. It keeps falling over and I keep sitting it back. Hopefully they'll still do, they'll do okay. We've got a flower there and a flower there. So hopefully soon we'll have some zucchini. These are another, it's another green zucchini. I'm not sure which one uh, this is, but I know that that is the, the dark green zucchini. I'm not sure which one this is. And I don't see any evidence of squash bugs yet. Up oh, there's something there. Might be squash bug, probably. Come out here and hit this with some pest uh, stuff. After the rain, of course. Got my tomatoes. And like I said, I pruned Pruning my tomatoes. I gotta get some cages put on these, but I've got tomatoes already growing. I prune, I prune 
the bottom at least two to three inches off so that way it would put more energy into the top and just keep growing growing up so these are some better boy tomatoes and I did try to prune it into two stalks so that way when I pin them up there will be two two prongs if not just one main stalk but I'm trying to keep at least two I did have some ladybugs out here the other day. So those are a happy sight when you see ladybugs because they eat aphids, I think. Here's some Roma tomatoes. And there's some cherry tomatoes. And all of those are putting off tomatoes. So hopefully, like I said, we'll have some tomatoes pretty soon. Here's a tomato. My better boys. Um, the okra is starting to really pop up. Looks like I've got some damage here. Some kind of pest. I'm not sure. I don't see anything. That's the old, older leaves. The newer leaf doesn't look like it's got anything on it. But this, I got three rows of okra. And there's some uh, summer squash starting to come up pretty good. And then I've got a row of blue lake bush beans. And the garden looks really good with the, the till. Uh, Mark is going through with the tiller. Here's my pickling cucumbers. I've got a whole bunch of those planted. I plan on trying to uh, pickle um, some cucumbers this year. I'm going to try to learn some bread and butter recipe and some dill. Maybe a sweet pickle. And there's my kitty cat. There's the bush beans. And then we have the butternut squash. They're coming up. Doing pretty good. Marcus also completed our A-frame. We put the breasts and the Moline Morans uh, that were just recently sent to us. Um, they're, uh, I can't remember, about five weeks old, possibly, or two weeks old. Uh, I can't remember. They are very happy in this A-frame, and being moved out of the house, they look a lot uh, healthier, fuller. Um, I think we've got a couple of roosters here. Well, good morning. Uh, today's the starting of a new day. Uh, we're having our morning coffee. Realize the chickens are low on water, so we're fixing to give them some more water here. I've already cut off the fence, and after I get through giving them water, I'll give you a show of how we set it up and what this new Premier One fence is like and how much we enjoy it. So let's go and give them their water. Down the potatoes. The potatoes look good. I could have done it in time, though. There you go, chick, chick. There you go, chick, chick. All right. So, as you see around here, we have a Premier One 100 foot fencing, and uh, it works very well. And uh, I can tell you from experience, whatever you do, Cut it off before you touch it because it will light your world up. It works very well. Both of my dogs, we actually have our guardian dog now. His name is Atlas. And then we have Nico out here playing in the field, dragging sticks everywhere. But uh, I, I set it up in pretty much just a, a round spot because there, I had one bare spot that had a whole lot of grass in it. And, but we really like it. The other night we were... Uh, Attacked by a couple of coyotes, but well, they tried to get our chickens, but uh, this Premier One fence really did the trick. It lit them up. And then, uh, and they haven't been back since. And we actually had a skunk come up the other night and bump it. And I was afraid I was gonna have to kill it because they stink real bad. But when he got stung by the fence, that was all it took. 
he was not having any more part of it. As you can see, we're keeping it focused so that they clean up wherever they can and they're really enjoying this high tunnel or chicken coop that I made. I've got to put my nesting boxes in the back. This was just to keep them safe at night time. They have a couple of roosting bars in there, but I'm fixing to put nesting boxes in the back and maybe a platform. But as you can see, it covers a pretty big area. A hundred square feet, I'm sure. So yeah, it was a hundred foot. So I just stretched it out as good as I could. It was very simple. Here, we'll give it back to Olivia. Uh, well, we're just giving you a full tour of everything that we've done. But the fencing works amazing. It's made of good, strong uh, material. I really can't remember the name of it. It's sort of like a nylon or something, whatever. But it works so good. And you can pretty much do anything you want to it. And it's just as simple as stabbing it in the ground and uh, making sure that you don't put... There's nothing that can touch your fence. Because, I mean, it can take a little bit. But it's, it's best to keep your fence as clear as you can possibly get it so that your conductivity is very good all the way through so as i'm walking through doing the morning chores which we have a hen gathering with us but uh i make sure that there's nothing touching the fence that could grow up and we're going down to my parents house so we're actually having to leave so we're getting everything ready to leave we're getting uh all the extra water is put out, making sure we got enough feed. And our neighbors are pretty good people. They're going to come over here and check on my quail. Because I had no idea quail drink as much water as they do. So they're definitely going to have to have somebody. The chickens, he'll check on those as well. But this is our tour of our Premier One fence. We bought the 48-inch. Uh, this is 48 inches high, 100 feet long. I can't, I, I can't even just, the quality of the fence is way better than I expected it to be. I, I, I wasn't expecting it to be this nice. And it comes with, uh, I think it's four stake posts. Pretty sure it's four. And those take out the, the, the sag in any of your fencing. So wherever you put it, you can tighten it up with these four stake posts. It's as simple as sitting it on the ground, stepping your foot on it. It works like a top. And when you cut it on, trust me. From a bulldog to a guardian dog to a chicken, they all know whenever it's on and they stay back from it. So this is our Premier One fencing show and tell. I really enjoy it. It works very well. It comes, I got the Premier 60 box with the grounding rod on the bottom. It looks like a fork. You stab it in the ground and you just clip it to the fence, clip the ground to the bottom stake, and you're in business. Press the button. As long as it's blinking green, you've got action happening. So this is what I wanted to show you for today. I think it looks great. And then she's going to give you a tour of the fence and all the way around the chicken coop. They're having a good time, ain't they? All right. So that's our tour. Okay. Uh, we're, we're out here at the... The little solar panel charging station, uh, it's called a 60 series. Uh, I can't tell you how much we enjoy it again, but it also came with this nifty little electrical sign in four different languages in case it's a little warning sign. It helps people. I added it to it. I noticed in some people's videos, they didn't show that it came with it and they said that they wished it come with it. I didn't ask for it, but this will let a kid that can read or somebody that way they can't say, well, hey, I didn't know it was electric. Hey, th there's your warning. Here's your sign. So, uh, the, but the solar panel, as long as you keep it clean, this thing's ready to go. Once you're ready, you hook up your hot wire, which is an alligator clip like so. You get your hot wire ready. And then you press this green button. Or actually, it's a clear button that'll blink green. Once it's blinking green, you have current. I should have brought the tester with me. I didn't bring a tester. But I know that this fence is hot. I know that it works. And if my camera girl wants to uh, test it out without a meter, would you like to put your hand on it? No? Okay. So I'm, I know that it's got current flowing through it. And plus, you can normally hear it popping. Y'all probably can't hear it, but we can. But uh, yeah.
So we love our Premier One. Stay tuned.